All right. Hello, 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 hello. It is Sunday afternoon. Welcome to the Let's Talk Solution Show. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm Ronald Garnett, one of your hosts, uh, your business finance consultant. Welcome again to Let's Talk Solution Show, show where we try to give you some solutions to issues. We raise issues, but we try and give you solutions also. So, I'm here today with my co-host, Tara Stalling. Yes, yes, yes. It's February, Ron. Yes, it is. It is February. We have an, um, the second month of 2020. Yes, time really flies. <laughs> it was yeah. just a um, few moments ago, we had uh, Christmas, New Year's. Wow. Now we're in February. Yes, yes. So um, today is February. And last night I had my annual event for couples, singles, um, dating. Mm -hmm. So I always had, and it was a, it was a success. We had Dr. Michael Mitchell on um, as one of the panelists, talking to the married couples. We also had Kelvin Troy Johnson of Love Coach Atlanta speaking with the singles, Melody Manning of Inspired by Melody. She talked with the ladies about dating and waiting and just the issues that women have being divorced or widowed and dating and just some of the issues in the uh, in the dating game. Okay. And it was, it was a success. Um, the place was packed. Everybody enjoyed it. People learned. They were empowered, educated, and inspired. So I'm excited. Okay. Uh, but what, one thing we... Now, Dr. Mitchell talked a little, little bit about uh, especially with married couples about the finance part. Okay. We talked about finance, you know, about how finance is, can be a, uh, a deal breaker for a marriage. So, and that was really good. He, of course, we talked about sex because sex is very important in the marriage. But one thing we didn't talk about is the importance of how the financial aspect of your relationship can either make it or break it. Well, I, I think that's true. Um, as a business finance consultant and a business consultant, when um, we, we are taught, and I, I taught business plan planning, business plan writing for several years. Mm -hmm. When you start a business, you must get your spouse and family on board. Right. Because that business changes their lives too. Mm -hmm. And and they're on the same ship with you are. You're on <laughs> the same boat. Right. So right. if the boat goes down, they go down with you. And it's not a good idea to follow your dream and impact someone else's life and not get them to buy into what you're doing. Wow. So you always have to understand that when you start a business, there's always a possibility of failing. So everybody needs to know that starting out, everything is not just rosy. Right. So and um, and your family needs to be uh, aware that there might be economic and lifestyle changes if something happens to that business. Okay. So they need to buy into the fact that we are ready to take this step with you. And if they are not, you may not be in a good position to start their business. If they are not willing to um, have that attitude with you, that we're going to try and win this together, we're going to make it, mm -hmm. that could affect you tremendously. Uh, I had a client of mine tell me mm -hmm. that when you're starting a business, running a business, it is so helpful to have your home life together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful yeah. to have your home life together and have your partner buy into what you're doing mm -hmm. and have your partner accept what you're doing and have your partner accept the risk in what you're doing. Mm -hmm good or bad right. so it is very difficult to run a business it's, it's, it's stressful it's, it takes a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. 
And it's very hard when you're out in the world fighting every day with competition mm -hmm. and trying to make ends meet and trying to run your business and to go home and fight with your spouse yeah. that you're in business. <laughs> so you're fighting on the outside business, then you're coming home and you're fighting at home because right. of the outside business. Outside business. So you have no relief. You have no relief. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing but full-time stress. Mm -hmm. You don't have anybody you can talk to. You don't have anybody who understands where, like you've always said, that bedroom pillow talk where just a husband and a wife there yes. <laughs> that nobody else really understands that talk. Mm -hmm. It's hard when that spouse is against you. Yeah. It's saying there is no bedroom pillow talk. No. It's bedroom Ar argument. argument talk. <laughs> yeah. And so that is why you always have to bring your family with you mm -hmm. and have them aware of what the situation is. And uh don't paint like a rosy picture of everything is going to be all right. Everything may not be all right. You're going to have some rough times. You're going to have some bad times. You're going to have some times you don't have any money right. where you are going to have to um, pay a bill. Um, and I I went to a, um, a friend of mine's funeral and he had a business mm -hmm. and his son was saying how proud he was of his father that I uh, thought he passed away. Mm -hmm that he ran a business and he didn't have payroll. Wow. So he said, with well, these people depending on him, he said, go ahead and pawn his car. Wow. <laughs> to wow. make payroll right. that Friday, you go ahead that Thursday to pawn his car. Oh, wow. Just to make, pay and, and that is not an unheard of uh, yeah. necessity and situations if you own a business, because sometimes you got to do whatever is necessary. Mm -hmm. If you got people depending on you, Right. If you have bills that must be paid to keep your business afloat, mm -hmm. you may have to pay them first to and hope you have support at home to understand, uh, it. understand that. Or right. even you can contribute to yeah. what's going on at home. Correct. Yeah. I mean, now I understand that because I, you know, I do own a business and you have to take care of the business bills before you take care of the home bills because if you don't you won't have a business or a home <laughs> right so <laughs> no means to make money and you have to understand that and that is and i i, I couldn't i had a car problem i couldn't come to the <laughs> <laughs> so in fact i text you from the car <laughs> from the repair shop yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm here you know can my car work though so i can't make it but um if you're in business and you're dating somebody, you can't have every kind of spouse. Mm -hmm. If you're in business, you can't have a fair weather spouse. No. You've got to have a spouse that's going to understand that there are lean times you were in it together. Uh, I have known many. What if you don't have a, because what if you're in business and you're dating? Mm -hmm. Say that you're in business and you that up, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, well, because we want to look at it from both aspects because yes, you may have a spouse, but what if you're just dating okay. and you are an entrepreneur trying to create a legacy for yourself and your potential, your potential family and in business, sometimes you have those really really high years and then or days or days, weeks, or weeks. <laughs> yeah or and then you have you know the the weeks that's negative i understand so that. how do you deal with that when you're I, dating well i i've I, I got a demand point of view <laughs> okay <laughs> because i guess i'm old school because most of the time if i'm dating somebody they just walk in to a movie, don't worry about what it costs. They don't want, right. they don't sit down and eat, they don't think about what it costs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't order a drink, they don't think about what it costs. Right. That's up to you. So if you're dating, you need to explain to the person that sometimes I'm not gonna have it. Sometimes I'm going to have to put the, that money I was spending on you elsewhere. 
and if the person can't understand that, then that might be something to look at as to whether that person is really right for entrepreneur. Well, look, let's look at this perspective because I have experience by being a business owner and entrepreneur. People have the perception that you have, a lot of money. That you have all this money mm-hmm. and that you're like a multimillionaire or you just, you know, and they think that you have all this resources of money and they don't under maybe don't understand you like well no you know i have this and i, and I, I use this example i was speaking to a uh, a family member of mine and we were just talking in general and i said well yeah you know i have two of everything mm-hmm. and they were like what are you talking about i said well i have uh two well, i did it was two i said it was rents mortgages i said i have Two light bills, two water bills, two gas bills, two phone bills. But how do you get all of that? I said, well, I have bills at my business Mm -hmm. that have to be paid. And then I have bills at home. And for some reason, it was such a shocker to that person. Like, oh, I didn't realize that you had bills at your your business. And I'm like, well, you know, you can't go get a business and not have bills. bills. You have to... Georgia Bible doesn't get you the light bill for free. And then I explained, I said, well, do you really understand that if you're in business, your bills are more than your home bills would be? Because the, the rate is higher. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, well, but, but that's just a perception is that if you have a business, mm-hmm. you have a large amount of disposable income. Because Say that again. Just because you're in business, people think you have a large amount of disposable income. Yes. And sometimes you have less. Yeah. Because if you're in business, you don't have money guaranteed. You have to go out and get the money. (laughs) And sometimes if what you're trying to do doesn't work, you don't make any money. Mm. And you have to try and make it up or try and do on the next thing that you're right, trying to do. Right. If I mean, if you were selling hamburgers and nobody comes in, you make no money. But right. you still have to have your lights. You still have, to have your 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 product there. Mm-hmm. You still have to have everything there. That fixed cost, that overhead, yes, that is there whether you make a dime or not. Yes, and therefore you're going to be under. So when you do make money. You just can't go out and say, oh, I got this money. Next month's not guaranteed to you. Right. Next day is not guaranteed to you. Yeah. So that is why you really have to, if you have a relationship, the person has to understand that. And the person has to also understand ours that you don't have a nine to five. Right. If your business is nine to five, if you're the owner, your hours might be six to ten. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's that's just the way it goes. Yes. And uh, now you said that, Ron, but I think a lot of people that either want wanting this to go into business or have a perception about business owners because you're right, you don't have a nine to five because you have to work however many hours it takes to get the job done. That's correct. I remember when I was uh, was dating, um, I, I, it frustrated me so much because in my salon business, I work in my salon Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. So Thursday night, Friday night are long nights because I don't work. I do my other business the other part of the week. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of difficult for me to kind of go out on Thursday night or Friday night because when I get off, one, it's late. Mm-hmm. Two, I'm tired. And I have to get up and be to work early the next morning. So it's difficult for people that's not in business to realize that, hey, oh, she doesn't have a specific time that she gets off. And if she gets off, I thought I worked 16 hours. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go out to eat. I want to go to sleep when I get home. Because in six hours, I have to get back up and do that thing over again. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And another thing that when you in dating, you have to understand stress. Yes. Because if you were working at 
a, a business and you're working nine to five, once you get off, you're kind of off. Mm -hmm. And you might have an issue with work or you don't like somebody or something, but you're basically off from work. Mm -hmm. If you're running a business, once it closes doors, you got to figure out how the doors open tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that's good. And it's stressful to sit down and worry about money. It's stressful to sit down and say, I got these bills mm -hmm. and I don't have any pay. Yeah. I, it's stressful to say, I have to go out and hustle up some money, find some money. If I got some money saved, it's now gone <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's been taken from me. And because I got to keep this thing mm -hmm. going. So with that in mind, there's a level of stress that is there. And it's going I hate to say it, but if you have been beat up all day <laughs> at your job and you own and you come home late and you it's like you are a dish cloth that just been wrung out. Mm. When you come home, whether you're male or female, you may not be perfect. You may not. May be, yeah. You, you may not be saying, "Oh, hi, let's go out and do something." <laughs> I, I, I got I'm full of energy. You might say, "Just leave me alone, so I can get, <laughs> so I can recharge." <laughs> yeah. Oh, you said that, uh, um, and Dr. Mitchell, especially, he talked about that in marriage, um, with marriage couples. Mm -hmm. He shared last night with the couples that you know you have to have a plan. You have to pre-plan those things out because you may come home on a night or several nights or several weeks where I just, I'm stressed and I don't want to be bothered. But then if you're in a marriage uh, or either you're dating someone to potentially marry, you have to put that in perspective and be a part of, okay, how are we going to work through this? Yes. I mean, you know, how I, our, am I going to work through it? And how are we as a couple or potential couple going to work through it? Well, yeah, I mean, it takes compromise. I mean, yeah. even if you are a business owner and you do feel like you've been dragged through the mud all day, when you, when you got plans with your spouse, you got to say, well, they've been putting up with this so long. Mm. I need to go ahead and say, I'm going to have a different attitude. Okay. I, I may not tell them how I really feel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said, no, I don't got to do this. That's the last thing I want to do. No, don't say that. But you go. But that's ahead, called compromise. But yeah, you go ahead and go yeah. and try and say, I'm going to, it's not about just me and my feelings. Mm -hmm. It's about us because we are in this together. Right. Because she put up with stuff I do. When she come, she come put up when I come home in a terrible mood. She says, okay, I just leave him alone, let him mm -hmm. chill out. Or you can sit down and, and talk about the problems you're having. She listen to something that she doesn't understand or he doesn't understand, mm -hmm. but it's just, I'm there for you. Right. So, which means a lot. So you got to compromise. You're never going to have it your own way. And a lot of people who are in business, who are running this, have a personality where they don't have to compromise. Wow. What do you mean when you say that? Okay. If you're in a business and you own the business and you got three, four, or five workers, if you say, I want it this way, you got to do it your way. Well, Nobody's going to, if they're going to disagree with you, they're going to disagree with you in the sense of trying to explain to you why you're wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's still your decision. Well, that's true, yeah. You don't have to compromise somebody you pay. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, you yeah, don't. So, you start, so if you have that attitude and you take it home with you, you're going to have issues because your spouse doesn't work for you. Mm -hmm. Not employee. That's your spouse. Mm -hmm. So everything just can't be your way. Right. You can't have that alpha 
personality all the time right. with a marriage where this is the way it got to be. You're going to do it my way, so forth and so on, because it doesn't have to be that way. Because then I got to stay married to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I got to stay married to you. Uh, I, I heard um, <laughs> a judge tell a, a, a gentleman one time, if your wife don't want you no more, she don't want you no more. If <laughs> she don't want to be with you no more, you got to move on. <laughs> Nobody can make somebody stay married to you. No. So, and even if things are looking great from the outside, I'm sure you know this, that nobody has to live with that person but you. That's right. And only you know what it's like living with that person. Right. Only you know. No matter how it looks from the outside. No matter perception. Perception. Yeah. Because nobody knows how that person is with you and how they treat you, mm -hmm. make you feel, except you. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people who are in business, if they're struggling, they're trying to make it take that attitude home. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in it, I'm not a a person who's trained like you are, mm -hmm. but I do know that if you, well, that, you know, that's, have the attitude, you don't have to be trained. Be a, that's be just look, com that's common sense. Yeah. You have the wrong attitude um, with any situation. Yeah. You're gonna get the you you're not gonna get the response that you're looking for. No, you're not. And uh, generally, when people do come in to talk about starting a business or want to be in business. You got to get your spouse on board. That's number one, mm -hmm. and you have to understand that it's a family dynamic that's involved, right? And that you really need to have some really, really serious, serious, open and frank discussions with your spouse, and you got to put your feelings aside mm -hmm. a little bit because your spouse, as you have said on other shows. You might say, well, my spouse has this idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know, I know my spouse when they know themselves. And, and sometimes I'm, people have ideas. Um, and you've said this several times, especially when people have come in to want to start a business. And you're like, well, do you have a business plan? I'm like, no, I don't have a business plan. I don't want a business plan. I just want to start a business. And that's kind of like sometimes in a relationship you have, um, your spouse may want have a great idea that they used to do when they were seven. Yeah. And oh, it's, we're gonna make it this business, and you're like, well, I've never seen you do that. No, I've never seen you do it. You may it may be in your head, and it may be a great idea, but I've never seen you do anything to actively say, hey, this is something that I really want to go into business about. Because great, all great ideas doesn't mean that you need to start a business. Oh, that you can do the idea, or you can do the idea. Yes, I mean, it's just like having a bag of seeds. That doesn't mean you're going to have a, a, a field of corn. Right. <laughs> it just means you got a bag of seeds. Yeah. That you got to plow the ground. Right. You got to weed the ground. You yes. got to plant the seeds. You got to water it. Yeah. You got to nurture it and care for it. And you also have to have a balance mm -hmm. so that you don't get so obsessed with that you let your personal life go down too. Right. Because even if you are that skewed toward business, it's still going to leave you kind of hollow, I mm -hmm. think. If you just make money and say, well, you know, I've been by myself. I got, I'm just. Make money be your focus. Fo focus. I, I'm reminded I was listening to someone and they had like a series on how being an entrepreneur ruined their marriage. And I didn't listen to all of the commentary that she was talking about, but just the title was a little disturbing to me because we have so many successful entrepreneurs that have successful marriages or they're still married. 
So to make a statement that, you know, how being an entrepreneur ruined their marriage, I think that was kind of a broad statement because being in business and an entrepreneur is one aspect of a marriage. Like you said, yeah, we have to be um, in this thing together, but can you truly say that being an entrepreneur is the reason that um, your marriage was dissolved or was it because some things you went let go lacking in your marriage as a result of being an entrepreneur? Well, it, it depends. It's probably that, as a guy, I'm not an expert in this, but it could be one of two things. Mm -hmm. uh, one, you're so focused in on doing that business, your spouse is just left out of your yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Or number two is that your spouse doesn't want you to be successful. That maybe if, if you're married to a gentleman and you start making more money than him, yeah. how is he going to deal with that? Yeah. I mean, now that's really you said that and the young lady last night was talking about how men have told her she they were this was just dating not marriage how that she is intimidating mm -hmm. and because she is an entrepreneur but she works and she has her own mm -hmm. um so i did not and i didn't mean to cut you off but i want to kind of interject right there because a lot of times Men do feel, I think, um, a sense of inferiority towards a woman that's quote unquote successful, whether in entrepreneurship or just in their career. All right, that's true. You might get intimidated. Uh, all right. Do you want to be Mrs. Somebody, Mr. Somebody? Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> that a little bit because we're talking about how money and love can either increase your relationship or decrease it because I'm never been a man okay and I don't know you know I know how I think well, but women don't always understand that well, that can be a factor in there well and why is that well it okay if you are Okay, I'll take you for example. If a man's going to date Tara Stallings, mm -hmm. he's not dating Tara Stallings, just somebody he knew in maybe in high school. He's dating maybe Dr. Tara Stallings, who has a business. Dr. Tara Stallings, who's an author. Dr. Tara Stallings, who is running workshops. And if he comes to uh, a workshop, and you introduce this as my spouse, Mr. Tom Stocks. <laughs> no, that would not be. That's what he's gonna feel. Oh, why? So <laughs> why? Feel so... Like that. If, if he is not really, if he has things like, I haven't really accomplished a lot in my life. Okay. And look what she has done. Okay. I'm gonna maybe feel a little intimidated. In, in, intimidated. Okay. Where it's like I haven't written a book. I haven't, you know, been on uh, no no TV shows. <laughs> I, I haven't won any workshops. I'm just a, a guy who goes to work from nine to five and do a little this, do a little that. But nobody is going to say. Look what he's done. Wow. I mean, so that could cause some stress in the relationship. Sure. Really, it could. I mean, I, mean, I, I, name, I know what I'm just trying to my, paint. My, my, my name's not a poster. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come to a poster. So. I see with, Dr. Sarah Stoddard back here. All her accomplishments. And who am I? I'm Norman No Name. I'm just well, <laughs> so in a relationship. So let's ask. Let's kind of deal with that. When we talk about finances and increases. Because if. Even if that with the female having um, a lot of accomplishments, it doesn't mean that they are more than or less than their spouse or their potential spouse. It just means that they have accomplished 
more maybe academically or in business where I just or maybe just follow some of their dreams. And I'm and I'm saying that because I'm thinking of now this is a rare case, of course, because what you're saying is so valid. And so people need to hear this mm -hmm. because now you know Joyce Myers and her husband, we never see Dave, we always see Joyce Myers on this on these mega stages, Bible studies, books, all this great stuff, international. And Dave is always in the background or in the audience, but he is okay with it because he knows this is my, this is what he is called to be. He works in the administrative part of it, running the business so that she can be out front. Um, okay. But he's not being seen and nobody knows, you know, Dave Myers, they know, Joyce Myers, Dave Myers, that's uh, Dave Myers, that's Joyce Myers, you know, husband. So I can understand how that would, you know, kind of be intimidating for someone that maybe has some um, anxiety about their position in, now they're married, in their relationship, okay. in their marriage. Okay. If you were married and it's Tara Stallings, Inc., mm -hmm. But your spouse is in the background running. How how do you think he might feel working for you? No, knowing that how much of a argument, a pushback would he have with you, knowing that my Wife's my boss. Well, and and I'm saying that in personal things. Mm -hmm. So you're arguing about something totally out of business. But in the back of your mind is that I am economically dependent on my wife. Well, let's let's put a con let's put a pin in it, really. Because one because you use the word wife. So when you become married. Mm -hmm. It's not my business anymore. It's not his business anymore. It's our business. So even though I'm already already established, and that's something that a uh, people that's in business have to think about. See, when you're an entrepreneur and you're already in business, you have to think about well, if you marry someone, male, if you're a female and you're the you the you know the entrepreneurs or breadwinner or whatever and you marry someone that's not doing the same thing or not have the same, uh, achieve some of those things that mm -hmm. you achieve, even if they, you know, if they want to achieve those things, mm -hmm. you have to understand when you get married, it's not, this is my stuff anymore. No, it's our okay. stuff anymore. So it wouldn't be, this is just, this is for me now, yeah, be, yeah. because it wouldn't be, he's working for me. We're working together. In a perfect world but right I, but, but, <laughs> but that's how marriage but that's in a, in a in a in a real in a realistic marriage okay because a lot of marriages are not realistic okay think about this how many um situations you've seen where female celebrities have been married to their managers or so forth yeah and how many times have they lasted not long. Okay. <laughs> we just see a we just saw a big scandal with a year, a couple years back with Mary J. Blige. And they had been married for a few years, and then it was a scandal because of how the marriage um kind of dissolved. So I understand exactly what so, you're saying. And so, I so I I'm saying you're being idealistic. I am saying that as a man, <laughs> you say I'm being idealistic. <laughs> As a man, mm -hmm. if I'm working for my wife, I'm gonna feel funny. Okay. What? Well, and that's, <laughs> and you know what? I, I'm gonna, and that's I'm the gonna, type of stuff that I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel funny. That if I decide I'm going to date a wealthy woman, mm -hmm. I would still want to pay for dinner. We might switch off sometime, but I would still want to pay for dinner. I, and I think I would and, expect him to and, pay for dinner. Yeah. Now I may not be able to to fly to Paris <laughs> for dinner. It, it might be um, a nice restaurant in town. <laughs> but, <laughs> but knowing she had the kind of resources, mm -hmm. 
I would probably think long and hard about marrying her because if we're going to live in or her house, drive the kind of car she wants to right. drive, have the kind of lifestyle she wants, right? and I know I can't provide it, am I okay with it? And how does she make me feel about it? Because when I, I, was, totally agree. When I was in college, many, a thousand years ago, we dealt with um, a sociological class, dealt with marriages and how marriages across cultural lines and mm -hmm. racial lines work. Mm -hmm. It's not when you okay and agree on everything is the problem. Is when you have a disagreement yes. and what things you can throw at the other person. <laughs> wow. What can you throw at them? Can you throw? <laughs> I make more money than you. Mm -hmm. Can you throw? You live it in my house. Can you throw? You working for me. Mm -hmm. It's what you throw to the other spouse in an argument. What can you say about them in an argument? Mm -hmm. That's the acid test right there. I agree with and, you. And so, That's why you have to put parameters <laughs> in place so that those type of things don't happen during the marriage. And we talked, look, we talked about this last night. We did. We I, I promise you we did. It's talked about Dr. Mitchell talked about exactly what you're saying, you know, making a constitution for your marriage. Making a constitution for your marriage in those times when difficulties come. So you just said, and I heard you, and I, I totally agree with you because this happens all the time. You have a woman that's making more money mm -hmm. with interested in a, a man that's making less money. And those are questions that have to be answered before you step into that marriage union. How am I going to be able to navigate through? She's making more money than me. And she's make, you know, I'm making $60,000 a year. She's making $360,000 a year. How am, I, how am I going to be able to navigate you going from my $120,000, $50,000 house to we coming and live in your $400,000 house? And I can't, my check can't really pay all of those bills. So the light bill is three times as much. And, you know, those type of things. So those type of things you have to kind of put into perspective and talk about because life is going to happen and people will say, oh, I can handle it. But just like you said, when something happens negative, the first thing you want to do is, well, this is my money. And women are good at that. We talked about that last mm -hmm. night. And I am guilty. Let me just say this because I got to be transparent. And when I was married, I would be quick to say, I don't need you. I don't need you. That was, don't say it. Don't say it. But, I'm, but you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when we're angry, yeah. we say things and you use the word throw. Yeah, throw. We want, what can we throw at you to, to get one up? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need you. I got my own and I can take care of my own self. That was something, you know, I would roll off, especially in the first marriage. Bye. I don't need you. So, but then what we don't realize that I had to realize, how would I feel if I'm making less money or we could be making an equal amount of money? You know what I'm saying? And I, they don't need me. Well, I don't need you either. How would that feel for, for your, so the person that you say you love and they say you love uh, you um, to throw that type of, you know, language and attitude in your face. Because sometimes I'm sorry doesn't heal up certain wounds. No, that, that is true. Now, And that's a wound that now, cuts so deep. Now, what I'm saying is, and I'm sorry I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have said something. About <laughs> uh, you could draft, draft up a document, a constitution mm -hmm. for fighting. Well, if I'm fighting, I'm fighting. Oh, but no, that's in the Constitution, though. That's what he was talking about. No, if I'm fighting, I'm gonna fight everything I can. No, <laughs> but see, that's, that's the reason. The, that's the reason you draw the Constitution so that you have rules and regulations to fight fair, 
so that you don't cause a, a riffle in your marriage or cut so deep to where the wound takes years and years and years and years to heal. Because I know for me being a female, you know, at one time in my life, I could say some things to my ex-spouse or somebody I was dating and I could, I could cut you with my mouth, really, I could cut you. And, and I never forget, um, and this is just being, and I was married then, um, and I really didn't, you know, it was coming to, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to be there. Okay. I was emotionally gone. Okay. And I got to the point in my growing to the point where I start feeling bad because of how I felt toward him. Okay. And it, and I was like, you know what? This is not fair. It's not fair to the person for me to harbor these feelings because I had to put myself on the other side. Mm -hmm. If it was me, I wouldn't want somebody to feel the way that I'm feeling about them. And we're in a marriage, we're in a relationship, we're sleeping in the same bed, we're living in the same house. I wouldn't want somebody to have those thoughts and those feelings towards me. So I started feeling bad. I was like, you know, this is just not, this not, this not fair to have um, these thoughts and feelings, even though, you know, they were valid to me. But I started feeling guilty because I didn't want someone to have that same, I felt the pain of how I would feel mm -hmm. if he would have told me, this is how I feel about you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Did you tell him? No, I didn't, but my yeah. actions spoke louder than words. words. Okay. Yeah, my actions spoke because like with a female, you can be there physically, but once your emotions are gone, you're gone. Okay. That's the end of a relationship. Okay. That yeah. that's it. She okay. can be there 20, 30, 40 years, but if she, if the female for a female, if emotionally she has left the building, <laughs> okay. it's okay. she has left the building. Do you get it back? No. no. Okay. Most of the time you don't. Okay. Because once it's gone for oh, I'm trying to think of that song. Uh I think I can't remember the song. One of the things to say when she said. When a woman's fed up, that was R. Kelly. Oh, R. Kelly. No, no. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Once she's emotionally gone, done, that's it. Okay. And okay. that that's it. Okay. So um, so we have to think about, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I, I see what you're saying. But people are necessarily rational. Well, and, and and you're trying to bring rationality. But that's what you have to be in a relationship. I understand. Lamar. I understand that. You have. I, you I, can't I, be I, in a relationship if you're not want to really willing to be rational. I understand. You can't fight dirty with your spouse. You can't do that. That's why you end up not having a spouse if you fight dirty. You can't be. You can't fight. You can't bring a street fight into the bedroom. To your home, you can't fight like that. Okay. Now, when I'm in the street, I'm fighting uh, uh, no holes bars. But if you're in a relationship, so you can't fight dirty. With you your cannot fight dirty with your spouse, okay, or even your potential spouse. You can't fight because dirty. if you fighting dirty with your potential spouse when you get married, it's gonna be amped up. It's gonna intensify. So if you can, you have to learn how to agree to disagree. You cannot throw everything. You can't do that because once, just like you, just like you, if a woman cuts you emotionally, if she, if she, because you know when we got some tongues. Yes, we, I know. If we got some, if if a woman says something to you that offends you or your ego or your your personhood to the point you're like, I ain't fooling with her no more. I don't even want to be bothered with her. You may deal with her, but your perspective and your your connection with her is not going to be the same at all. You're going to be harboring some some hates, some some ill feelings toward that person because they cut you so deep. 
Okay. You know, I guess what I would think as a man, I don't know how a woman feels. Mm-hmm. That is how she really feels about me. Yeah. <laughs> and so she really yeah. doesn't like me. Yeah. So why should I be in a situation of relationship with somebody who doesn't like me, doesn't respect me? Because I think a very Sweetie. good friend of mine said to me that respect is more important than love. If the person doesn't respect me, they can't love they me. They can't. They can't. And see, what men need is totally different than what women would need. Men need peace. Mm-hmm. They need to be respected. They need um, sex. Mm-hmm. They need to be honored. Uh-huh. You give a man that, you can about just get, almost get anything out of, in the world that you want from him. Mm-hmm. Women are not the same way. We need for you not to just listen to us. We need to be heard. Okay. We need to be feel, we need to, to be um, a priority in your life. And we need to feel safe around you and protected. If you give a woman that, you can get whatever you want from her. Okay. You can get whatever you want from her. So the needs for a woman and a man is different, totally different. A man has to be respected. Because you just said, if you don't, if I feel like you don't respect me, there's no way that you can love me. You. So if you come into the street fight, if you come into the, because you angry, you bringing a street fight in the home. She's not gonna. You're not gonna feel respected. Mm-hmm. She's not gonna feel safe. Okay. Because you coming in with all you got, or she's coming in with all she has. You're like, wait, you don't even respect me. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I, I just think that it's difficult when you got emotions and one man. That, well, that's why you have to deal with those things before you get angry. Before, well, I would say you have to deal with your emotions before you enter a relationship, and most people don't. You have to learn how to control your emotions and set boundaries in a relationship. Okay. You have to do that because just because oh I'm angry, I can't just fly off. You can't just do that. Okay, you still okay for. I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to paraphrase what I was just saying mm-hmm. is that no matter how angry you are with that person, you still have to keep in mind I got a level of respect for them yes. and, and love for them no matter how angry it is. How angry. And you may be valid. And I got to keep it in certain bounds. You got to keep it. If you, and, and I'm just going to say this. I'll say it this way. Um, if you come into a grief, hey, when you just done something just to piss me off we have a safe word you know i'm just gonna when i say pineapple leave me alone because right now this we're gonna need to leave this here because this is going to escalate to something that's not going to be produce a good outcome so you have to and that's with having that conversation before okay look or i I just use the word pineapple just say hey we need to revisit this later because we're not going to come to a resolve right now. We need to revisit this thing because you're going to say something that um, you don't, you're going to regret later. And I'm going to say something that I may regret later because the emotions are high. You know, the conversation is heated. And sometimes you just have to back off so you don't come in and throw in everything because you just like, well, I got to win. Because if you do that in a relationship, no, but who really wins? Well, nobody wins. Nobody wins. You lose. You won the fight, but you won the you, you won the battle, but you lost the war. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you gotta think about I, it. I think about you might have won, you know, you won the battle, but you actually lost the doggone war with us. All right. So I guess I'm just saying that men look things differently. That yeah, true it, enough. It, it really, we really do. That, true. Uh, People, not just men, because, you know, it's some women that feel like, well, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, and I'm going to fight with all I got. Okay. I'm going to cut your throat. Yes. I'm going <laughs> to. But, but how productive is that in a relationship? Well, not at all, I don't think, because, you know, you really don't um, gain anything. You don't gain anything. Right. You might have won. Right. But. All right. So, um, when we talk about finances and love, that thing can be huge. 
it, it can be difficult. So you really have to kind of think about, hey, business, because yeah. if you have an entrepreneur, if you have a business and you want a business, a marriage, mm -hmm. then you have two businesses two. you got to deal with. Okay. I understand. So <laughs> you got to put as much effort into your home as your business. Yes. And you have to be in agreement. Okay. All right. Well, I guess time for Yeah, go. it's time. Our time is up. Thank you guys um, for listening. Make sure you go. Um, I'm actually live on, on um, my YouTube, YouTube page today. So if you haven't to go to Let's Talk Tara on YouTube and like and subscribe, make sure you subscribe because on Tuesday, um, I'll be back on live with Talk Therapy with Melody Manning. And um, yeah. Okay. And next time we'll be in with Ron again. What two weeks, Ron? Two Ron, weeks. Man. Yeah, well, we missed a week, so we're gonna be on. So if you're watching on any social media outlets, make sure you like and share and follow both of our pages. I think we're tagged in both um, in both lives. So make sure that you like and share so you can stay abreast on what's going on with me and what's going on with um ronald Gar dr ronald garnett ron tell them how they can get in contact with you i'll just get it just give me a call at 706-513-4703 or just go to garnet and associates.com go to my website you get in contact with me through there that's garnet and associates.com www.garnet and associates.com all right, and you know you can always reach me at Tara T. Stalins Inc. dot com or at 706-294-9924 or 706-414-5535. Um, or you can just go to my calendar and make a uh, appointment to have a free 30-minute call. Until next time, see you guys. Make sure you go and like and share. Tell a friend, tell your um, family member about Let's Talk Solution with Dr. Ronald Garnett and Tara Stoll. Okay, thank you. Till next time. All right, thanks. All right, bye.